What's up, y'all? This is Aquarius Roberts back at it again with another video with the Peace Dealer. So this is your weekly report. Uh, this is the 20th through the 27th. And I wanted to do something interesting here because um, I am incorporating astrology with tarot and other arts also. So in this video right here, I just wanted to bring the two together because this is like something I've been studying for so, so long, I just can't keep it separate for real. So our current energies right now are Sun in Leo, Moon in Sagittarius, Venus in Libra, Mars in Capricorn, Jupiter in Scorpio. Oh, and that's awesome, right? Uh, and Saturn in Capricorn, Uranus in Taurus, Neptune in Neptune in Pisces, Pluto in Capricorn. Okay, so we got a lot of energies going on right right now. And I just want to label this. Are you really doing what you want to do? Simply said right there, right? Are you really doing what you want to do? Are you really doing in life what truly makes you, you happy? Now, I was just talking to somebody about this earlier. And one thing I came up with is that, for example, people go get jobs to make money, right? To, to provide for their families. Now, sometimes it doesn't matter what the job is, as long as you're able to support your family you are happy. Now these two, these two things that I'm saying here, family, because this is Leo season right now and the sun is in Leo, conjunct the midheaven, okay? So this, this is actually the current daily chart, okay? So Scorpio rising energy right now uh, with Taurus on the back hand, right? And Taurus is all about self-love, correct? So, uh, I was talking to somebody and I said, usually people go get jobs to provide for their family. They don't go get jobs to be happy and provide their families. They say, well, this job makes this much money. I can make a lot of money here. But while they're at work at their job, what's the thing you usually hear from people? I cannot wait to get off of work, right? They're just like, I can't wait to get off of work. Why can't you wait to get off of work? Because this job sucks. What I'm doing sucks. I don't like it. It is paying the bills, but it's not making me happy as an individual in here. So therefore, you're sacrificing, right? And don't get it twisted. Sacrifice is awesome. But you got to understand what you're actually sacrificing for, right? Because sometimes we can sacrifice for all the wrong reasons, right? And then we end up upset, tired, mad, irritated at everybody else around us because of our situation right because of the choices that we made and so here the universe is telling us right now are you doing what makes you happy right sun is conjunct the midheaven in leo right and scorpio is on the rising so this is great for you scorpio risings out there who uh, are used to taking the blame right I know one thing about Scorpio rising people, they always get blamed for stuff that happened or just anything that goes wrong. 
oh, it was you. It, it was your fault. It's how you did it. And it's, and it's because Scorpio, their mission here in life is to become more emotionally strong, emotionally mature. Scorpio is, is the sign of emotional maturity, right? And um, how you use your power, right? So here, Scorpio on the rising is basically saying, what are you taking the blame for? What are you taking the blame for in your life? We got Jupiter conjunct that, giving you new philosophies, right? So Jupiter is direct now. Oh, and so happy day today. Uh, Mercury is actually direct still in shadow period. So don't get too excited, people. It hasn't caught motion yet. This is what, what we mean when we say a planet is still in shadow period. It's still trying to gain momentum to go forward. So yes, Mercury is direct, but it's still catching momentum to move forward so that we can gain greater adaptivity or greater communication where we didn't have it before, right? So not about Mercury right now. Jupiter is conjunct in Scorpio in the first, in the, in the 12th house, right? Of compassion and spirituality and being alone, right? And so Jupiter is here giving light, giving universal truth to the 12th house, right? And, and making the 12th house become more about your spiritual identity, right? Because the 12th is next to the first house, which is your personal identity. So the 12th house is your spiritual identity, how you view the world spiritually through your spiritual eyes, your spiritual lenses right here, right? And the way you're, the, the perception that you're seeing is Jupiter with Scorpio, right? And so Scorpio wants to dig deep into things, right? Scorpio wants to dig deep into life and find out the truth. Have I been lied to? Have I been played with, toyed with, right? And so here, cusp in the 12th house and the first house, this is what I am, what am I taking in? You got to understand, Scorpio is the most psychic sign, right? So here with Jupiter, it's seeing deeply into a situation to gain a greater philosophy of it, right? So this could be in relationships. This could be at work. This could be anything, right? But it's all about clarity. It's all about being able to see in the dark. That's what Scorpio is for, is to be able to see in the dark. Yeah, they say we're the darkest sign. But we are, it's not that we're the darkest sign, it's that we can see beneath the veil. We can see behind the veil, right? Because I know a lot of Scorpio, as, as myself, I'm a sun Scorpio, but I'm a Sag rising, Sag Mercury, Sag Venus. So I'm very personable. I'm very uh, benevolent. I'm very lighthearted. And even though I have my dark soul, I'm very lighthearted. So I can see into my own darkness. So does that mean that I'm dark? No. And everybody has Scorpio in their chart, right? Everybody has an eighth house, right? So we all have Scorpio. So then that would mean everybody's dark, but we're not. We're not all dark. We just can see in the dark. We can see dark areas where others fail to tread, right? And everybody has this in their chart. So somewhere in your chart, you're able to see things in the dark. Doesn't matter, right? So here, so here, Scorpio is giving you the perception to see, to analyze your life and how you're dealing with things and how you're using your forward motion, right? And Jupiter is giving you the light also because it's the sky god. Jupiter is the sky god. So Jupiter is giving these lessons from the higher realms down to Scorpio in the lower realms. So there is double vision going on right here right? Where you're able to see things in a better light, the way you weren't seeing them before. Sun and Leo is giving you self-expression, creativity. So the things inside of you are able to produce results in the world, 
These, this change of perception can change your view of the world and help you see things in a better light, right? Because sun can jump the midheaven. Midheaven is your highest point. This is where you're trying to get to, right? And so Leo is on the 10th house cups. So the IC, which is the lowest part of the chart, the fourth house, is Aquarius. So Aquarius is what? Aquarius is community. It's the people. It's philanthropy. It's universal. It's astrology also. Yay! <laughs> it's astrology also. And so Aquarius being at the fourth house is saying, and Aquarius is also, if you think that are most, they're the sign of I know. That is their title, I know. So Aquarius is know a lot, and they're also a fixed sign. So they're fixed to under they're, they're fixed to seeing things, right? They're fixed to seeing their vision the way it is. And they see life the way they see it, and nobody can change that because they've experienced life their own way. And so they've gained enough knowledge, and, and Aquarius is the sign of the genius, also. So is Gemini, so is Gemini, the sign of the genius, but Aquarius is more galactic, right? Aquarius is more worldly, galactic, universal, right? Where uh, Gemini is about the environment, you know what I mean? So Gemini for me would be like the minor arcana and then the major arcana would be Aquarius, right? The higher, the higher octave, because Aquarius is the higher octave of, of uh, Gemini, right? So, Aquarius uh, is seeing this big picture, seeing things the way they've been seeing them, right? And fixed on that thought. Now, let's not get it confused because Leo is also a fixed sign, right? And so Leo being fixed, but it's different because where Aquarius stays, stays with what it knows, Leo is more creative and open and expressive and able to see things in a, in, a, in a brighter light, right? Leo is a very optimistic sign. It rules the sun. So the sun is comfortable here, right? And Leo. Now, the sun in the 10th house, the sun in the 10th house is career, right? It's how you are viewed out into the world. This is how people see you. This is how, this is how people adapt to you, like on the internet. You guys looking at me right now, if I was a Leo mid-heaven uh, and you guys are listening to me, you would think uh, the way he speaks is very, very self-expressive, self-expressive, um, caring and, you know, um, forceful, uh, you know what I mean? And put, put to the forefront. This person doesn't hide who they are. They appreciate who they are. So you would see that out in the, out in the world about me. So here, this is a worldly thing. So this is what all of us are going through right now, right? And so all of us are changing our perceptions of what we call life, what we see every day, how we deal with things. Excuse me, I'm thirsty. And I so love mocha frappes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, which is the only thing I can get from McDonald's and our French fries, French fries thingy too. But uh, anyways, uh, so right now with the sun in the 10th house, this is about your career, how you're seen in the world. This is about your status, your status quo, um, our being in the status, right? The status quo of living, what we call common sense. The 10th house is the house of common sense because you know Capricorns, Capricorn energy, and Capricorns are about no nonsense at all. That's the thing with Capricorn. No nonsense at all, right? So the sun is here giving light to what you call nonsense, right? Giving light to what you call nonsense and what's your status out in the world. And so sun conjunct midheaven is changing this. It's, it's more expressing what you want out of the world? What do you want out of your life? How do you want things to be change, right? And so we got the moon currently 
The moon is currently in Capricorn, conjunct Saturn, right? So moon conjunct Saturn is serious. It's the seriousness. Saturn's retrograde. So Saturn's focused on the inner part, right? Which is the 10th house ruler. So the 10th house ruler is in the second house of finances, money, real estate, self-love, your chi, your power, your inner power, right? Your mojo, I say, your, your, mo, your mo, mojo, right? So uh, your mojo is here is being made serious. It's being made more serious. Emotionally, you have to take the things that you desire because the second house is Taurus, Venus, the things you desire and want, right? The things you want in your society, the things you want in the world, what you call nurturing. Because Taurus is all about how they nurture. Taurus is a very nurturing sign. They nurture themselves a lot. You know what I mean? By good food, good drink, good everything, right? And also good feelings. You know what I mean? Whether good or bad, but just feeling that to the greatest extent, right? Because they're across from Scorpio's house. And so, yeah, they're, they're very, very serious about what they want and headstrong, right? And so Saturn here, putting a restriction on the second house is making you work because Saturn only wants you to work. It wants you, it tests you to see if you've, all, if you've seen or if you've grown and learned your lesson, right? If you're ready to boss up on whatever you've been afraid of, if you're ready to put that action in. And so here, uh, Saturn conjunct moon, because the moon only spends two days in a sign. So it's leading out of Capricorn, uh, currently about to leave out of Capricorn. So moon conjunct Saturn, Saturn is being more serious about how you feel. This is also introducing more fears because it is the moon and Saturn, and Saturn is a very critical planet. So the moon is what I want, right? What I need to make me feel good. And then Saturn is, this is what I fear, and this is what I need to overcome to be strong, because Capricorn is all about climbing the mountains, climbing the mountains and getting to the top. Okay, and so here in the second house of money and finances, and it, it's how you're, are you getting what you want? Are you making the money that you want to make? Are you seeing life the way that you want to see it? Is everything going good for you? If not, you're going to go through these fears, these fears of how will people see me, right? Sun in the 10th house. This is the major point, vocal point. How do people see me? How am I expressing myself to the world? How am I putting my words out there? Learning the philosophy from Jupiter and Scorpio, right? Gaining a new philosophy of life and how I see myself out in the world and how others see me. Am I my, at my happiest moment right now, right? And so we have Mercury in the ninth house of philosophy. Boom, here's more. And then conjunct the North Node, right? So Mercury's communication, right? Your skills, right? Your magic, how you work your magic, how you use your skills out in the world, right? And then North Node is in Leo, conjunct Mercury, so North Node is what? Your destination, where you're trying to go. Higher communication, higher development, higher, higher skills, heightening your skills, heightening the skills, making them more adapt, sharpening yourself in communication and how you communicate with others, right? In the world. So you're bettering yourself and changing your own personal identity with yourself so that you can react and, and, and deal with the outer world in a better way. Isn't that amazing? Everybody's asking, how are we growing? Why is this so tough? It's tough because we're growing. Growth is always tough, people. It never comes easy. I wish it did. I wish I could just rear my lopes 
you know what I mean, and, and get me a, a olive, a olive tub mocktail, or whatever they call. I should have thought of a, a better drink. I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But you know what I mean? Like sitting on the beach chilling, like, yeah, this would be fine. This would too. But no, nah, if you're not, if you're not having a teeth biting, the 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 crucial feeling, you know what I mean? And the feeling like uh nobody's listening or understanding me. That's when you're grown. That's exactly when you're grown right there. And that's what this energy is making. It's making you pronounce yourself more. Pronounce yourself. Tell people what you want, right? Because Venus is in Libra. What do you want in the 11th house Aquarius, right? What do you want from the people? What do you want from the people? How are you going to give love? How are you going to introduce this love into the world? What does it mean to you? What is beauty to you? Are you being fair? How can you be fair to others? How, you, how can you be fair to your society, right? How can you be fair to your friends? Are you giving, are you, are you balancing out your time with your friends and yourself? Right? What's your, what's your ideas on your friends and yourself and your society and, and how you do things? How do you think about the world, the galactics, right? What do you think about how the, how the universe works? Are we all one with that understanding on how the world universe works? Because the universe is mental. And for some reason, a lot of us are out here still polarized. Oh, yeah, we're going to do a video on polarity, too, because we got a lot of that. You know what I mean? Because here's the truth. I got my views of the world. I'm pretty sure y'all got y'all views of the world. And y'all got y'all views of what people are. And, you, and I got my views of what people are. And so we're all different. This is true. But have an understanding that we're all the same too because we're all questioning who knows if my ideas are actually right i just know that a lot of people agree with them right and a lot of people understand them and receive them and take them in but to another person they may see oh there's there's some blotches here there's some dents maybe this could be better but that's fine that's how you introduce growth and learning but to be polarized is to see the world the way you see it and not see it any other way. That's also biased for anybody who doesn't know what biased is, because I know a lot of people call people biased all the time. You know what I mean? You're biased because you think the way you think. No, if I don't accept that you think the way you think, then I'm being biased. It's okay to believe what you believe in and what you understand. Shouldn't nobody take that away from you? Shouldn't nobody tell you you can't believe life the way you believe it? Unless it's destroying your life. Now that's different. That's another conversation. When you're destroying your life and somebody's trying to help you and you're not listening, maybe that could become biased because you're not thinking of a different perspective of living, of life. So it has a fine line between the two, right? It has a fine line, drink. Okay, so uh, Mars is in also in Capricorn, which is my Mars. My Mars is actually in Capricorn in the second house also. So uh, <clears throat> Mars in Capricorn, as I spoke, Mars is Capricorn. Uh, um, um, comfortability, right? And so when Mars comes into Capricorn, it's comfortable there. Right, because it's the code roller for Capricorn, for uh, yeah, for Capricorn, and so Saturn being the first, okay, and so um, Mars is your passion and energy, right, and then Capricorn is the mountain goat that climbs the mountain, right, to get to get to the top, to be successful, to be known, right, but Mars makes Capricorn more, more direct, more bullheaded, more forthright, more forward about their actions. They're not hidden. They're more, but they're responsible. They don't make moves unless they know that it's the right move to make, right? Because fear plays a part in this too, which nobody talks about with Mars and Capricorn, is that 
the Mars and Capricorns have fears that they have to overcome. And this is that mountain. This is the mountain. Uh, the fear of what will people think? You know, the fear of is this going to work out? The fear of um, um, am I going to be happy here? Once I get here, am I going to be happy? Do I got everything written down correctly? Do I got my I's uh, dotted and my T's crossed, right? Just being a perfectionist, moving with perfection and responsibility, not making a move unless you're sure about the move that you're going to make. So here with Mars and Capricorn in the third house of the environment and your mindset, right? It's overcoming the mind obstacles, the mind. The mind is the major thing that we need here in this world because without our minds, we'll go crazy, right? And so it's overcoming those mental hurdles that you got going on within your life that's stopping you from the success that the sun in Leo is trying to bring you. We have Uranus trying the moon right now. And so Uranus is actually retrograde right now. We actually have a six planet retrograde. So it's real inner work. It's deep inner work right now. If you guys are looking to like move forward with certain plans or stuff like that, take your time. Make sure it's well thought out. Make sure it's what you want to do and how you're trying to get it done. Now, this is a mental thing also, right? So Uranus wants to break free, okay? So Uranus is in the sixth house of work, tools, and mental health, right? Purifying, releasing, letting go, your enemies, right? And so on the subject, uh, Uranus is trying to break you, break you free from the, from the entities you have in your mind. Right? This is all a mental thing. So I'm not talking in the world. I'm talking mental. This is a mental, mental change for all of us right now. Right? Because Uranus is in the sixth house of the mental health. It's how your health is being affected by the way you think, by the way you feel, by the way you're expressing yourself. And so Leo, son in the 10th house and Leo wants to free you from all of that, wants to free you from your limitations wants to free you from these things that are mentally taking you down, that are mentally stressing you out. But in order for you to do that, you have to face them, right? Mars and Capricorn in the house of the mind. You have to mentally overcome these things so that you can see things in a more positive light. So you can see things greater, right? Greater in understanding greater in ability so that you more mentally aware and not stress. So it's funny because I feel like all of us out here right now are going through this mental test that is stressing us out to help us relieve and let things go, right? It's like the 10 of wands reversed, letting go of those burdens and releasing them to the world so that you can be free, sun in the 10th house in Leo, so that you can be free. Uh, Mercury in the ninth house of philosophy, free with a new philosophy on life and how you see things, right? And so Neptune is making a trine to Jupiter right now in Scorpio, and Neptune is in Pisces, which is its ruler. Um, so things are extra dreamy right now, right? But Neptune is retrograde, so the dreaminess is cut off. Okay, so it's cut off. So now I've seen your personal dreams, your dreams, what you're thinking about, what you want, right? And what's, what's, what's valuable to you and, and yourself. It's in the fourth house of home and your intimacy and your yourself and how your emotions, your emotions, how your emotions work and how others perceive your emotions out in the world. So in Pisces, right? In, in Neptune and Pisces, but the fourth house is Aquarius. So Aquarius is a little more detached, right? Detached emotionally, more thinking, more analytical about life and more pondering, right? And more weird uh, when it comes to doing things. And 
I hate the word weird for real. Weird is a good thing, but I, I just don't think it's actually being weird. I, I, I think that it's a person that's not afraid to think outside the box, right? People lab want to label something all the time. They want to put a label to something to say, this is what it is. If you're thinking outside of the box, you're weird. And so now people got to say weird is good, right? But really, it's not being weird, right? It's just being different. That's it. A lot of people can't accept that. Did you know common sense wasn't really common? I'll just put that out there real quick. Uh, <laughs> but um, but um, Pisces, Neptune right here. Neptune and retrograde conjunct the part of fortune. Your dreams. What are your dreams? Your, your inner dreams. What do you want? What have you been afraid of all your life to express? Or what are you afraid of to express to other people out in the world? What do you want people to know about you that you have, you've been afraid to show, right? What do you want people to know about you that you've been afraid to offer? Maybe you're not communicating your ideas enough. Maybe you're not communicating your philosophy enough to people. You know, they say um, what you put out into the universe comes back to you all the time, right? So if this is true, then how are you philosophizing out in the world? How are you talking about life in general? How are you communicating about life? What is your philosophy on life? Is that helping you gain better relationships and friendships with others, right? Venus in the 11th house. Is that helping you gain better relationships with others? Is that satisfying your personal development, your wealth, your inner beauty, your inner beauty? Is it? Question we all got to ask, right? And so here, and so here, you want to remember, don't be afraid to express yourself. Don't be afraid to tell people how you feel. But also, also, don't be stubborn about it. Don't be stubborn about having new views. You know what I mean? It's okay to have new views on life. It's okay for other people to come in and share something with you, right? You want to come out of Aquarius, you know what I mean? The, uh, the, the stubbornness, you know what I mean? And open up to self-expression and believing in yourself and staying true to who you are. Because that's what this moment is all about. It's about believing in yourself and what you can do and how you produce and, and gaining that momentum and power within yourself. Self-status. Fuck the status that's going on in the world. What about the status to yourself? How do you see your own status and your own personal development? And that's what this is about, guys. So I hope you enjoyed your weekly. Uh, and... Also, let's jump into the real. Boom! All right, guys. So that was your astrological reading for the week. Let's jump into the tarot. Woo! Woo! Yeah, I love you guys. So the world just dropped out of us now. The world just dropped out just now, so I'm going to use it because it just dropped out. So the world card right here is your first card, and the star would be the shadow, okay? So the world is coming to a completion, right? These are all the fixed signs. Funny, right? These are all the fixed signs around the world, as I was just talking about in your astrology reading. So these are all the fixed signs around the world right? Leo, Scorpio, uh, Taurus, and um, Aquarius, right? And um, so these signs right here are indicating the reef around it is the safety point, right? This woman inside, the, all these fixed signs are around her, but she's free from all the fixation, right? She's free from being fixed. Interesting, right? Free from being fixed completion, overcoming, you know what I mean? And spiritual growth. So if this is for your mental, this is about 
completing a phase of your life, completing a way of thinking, a way of thinking, right? Or something that you've been stuck to, right? That you finally completed and overcome. So this is all about integrating and overcoming things and starting fresh in a new phase so that you can enjoy life a little bit. With the star card as your uh, shadow card, right? There's the star in your shadow. Sorry, I can't get this clear. I'm trying to get this clear. Okay, anyways, with the star in your shadow, this is basically saying that, uh, there it go. So this is basically saying it's a time of healing. Healing what? Healing your emotions, healing your mental, healing, just healing, period, right? And gaining a new philosophy of life. Whether this is work and you've been working at a job and you know you're seeing this job as like negative or something like that, but you forgot why you were doing it, or you're not happy with the job and you don't really want it, you want something better, right? But this is also dealing with healing from ailments, right? Healing from hurt, pain, healing from uh life and people and and just hurting yourself for the things that has hurt you right and so now it's time to heal from all of this and to gain a greater perception right and so let's move forward all right tell the people all right so the knight of, I'm sorry, the page of wands just popped out, okay? And so the page of wands is a pretty interesting card. I really like this card. I can't get the camera to go clear. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the page of wands is saying you're trying to start making actions. You're, to, you're trying to start making moves, right? Uh, something's inspiring you right now. Uh, to bust a move, to make things happen within the world, right? You're you're not scared to 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 heal. You're not scared. It's overcoming that fear of scaredness, right? And wanting to put some action forth to get things to turn out the way you want them to, right? And so this is taking the initiative, whether this is in love. Or not, this is an Aries rule card. So uh, as you know, Aries rules the head and also uh, Aries is the uh, youngest sign, right? And so this card is definitely about head trauma, right? Chiron is an Aries retrograde, just turned retrograde just recently. And so now we're looking within, we're healing the outside, but now healing the inner side, right? So when Chiron's direct, we're healing outside ailments, right? Um, like you might see things in your environment that used to hurt you. Like, like uh, it's a psychological thing. It's like you might be in a relationship with somebody, right? And, you know, um, they might show you an action that might have happened in a past relationship. And the way you react to the situation shows a lot. It shows it shows how you've grown, right? And how you've overcome. So if it's still affecting you, then you have to pay attention to that and you have to overcome that. But if it's not affecting you, then that shows your growth, right? That's something that used to affect me. So it could be, you know, dealing with a person, uh, dealing with an attitude, maybe how some people act, you know what I mean? But it's all coming to you in one place and teaching you how to heal right? Because that's what this is about. Chiron's healing the inner child, right? So the things you've experienced from the past that wounded you are giving you blessings now and like now so that you could be a teacher later, right? A teacher in whatever you've grown from and be able to express that better and, 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 and not hurt you anymore, okay? So your next card is the Nine of Pentacles. A lot of self-love cards, a lot of healing and self-love. So the Nine of Pentacles, this is actually ruled by Venus. 
Uh, and so the Nine of Pentacles is a very good card. Uh, and so this card is all about self-love and beauty and indulgent and what you want out of the world, right? So right now is it's, it's a time to know what you want. What do you want from the world? What do you want from people? What do you want from life, right? What do you want, right? How can you have greater vitality? Look at all this yellow in here. How can you have greater vitality? How can you open up and express yourself more, right? And be free, right? But as you see, this woman is alone. So it's like she's, she's taking the time out to help herself, to help herself beautify right? To be proud of something around her, to be a proud of her environment around her. She's beautifying it, right? Her social, her social status means the world to her because it's Venus, right? But you want to watch indulging too much in this stuff, right? Because uh, the, her reverse is like overindulgent, being lazy or complacent, Right. And so this is what this is about. Not being complacent, putting the foot forward to heal. You have to put your own foot forward to heal. Right. To have this completion, you got to put in the work. That's why we got the six planet retrograde going on right now, because we got to put in our own work. Right. Own work from what? The devil to those things that have been binding you, those thoughts that have been binding you, those feelings that have been binding you and have not been putting you in a good place, right? Because you don't wanna, you don't wanna, you, the devil is cool because it's about commitments, but it's like, what are you committed to? What, what, what feelings are you committed to? How have you been feeling at this time? And what have you been holding on to? The devil is all about binding and commitment, right? This card will be about a committed relationship too. So if you're in a relationship that's karmic, devilish, you know what I mean? Or it's all about rules and responsibility and stuff, and there's no fun, no play in it or anything like that, this is the card that will show up in your situation. So you're bonded by something that's not healthy to you, right? That's not healthy for the spirit right? And so it's more carnal and materialistic. So it's about money, right? You could, because he has this, he has a pinnacle upside down on his head. So if you know it's the pinnacle upside down, if the pinnacle is upright, it's about spirit over matter. If the pinnacle is reversed, it's about matter over spirit, right? And so this is about those everyday things that you're dealing with in the world that you might be attracted to or attached to that might not be helping your soul grow, right? And so you want to come out of that. You want to change that and better that situation because it's all about your growth. So your final card is death. Ooh, change is coming. So death right here is definitely saying that change is coming for us all. It's time to change. It's time to heal. It's time to end these old phases and start with something new. It's not, it's, it's, it's whatever you've been thinking about or dealing with in your life, it is no longer important. It's time to adapt to something new. So grow, people, grow. I think that's the best thing that we can do in this world daily is grow and learn and see each other and try to progress, right? So this is Aquarius Roberts, tarot God on his way out. Y'all be cool.